Hello everyone. My name is Orzama Datta Saikya. I, I, I look after the verbal team. I handle the verbal team in Jambori. And in uh, Jambori, we focus a lot on time management. We understand that GMAT is uh, not just about the concepts or the content. A lot of, the, a lot of effort has to go into time management. And um, uh, so a little bit about Jambori. So we have been we have been around since 1993. So that's almost 26 years now. We have been training GMAT students for all these 26 years. We have uh, our students get 700 plus scores regularly every year. Uh, close to 15, 20 percent of our students get 700 plus. Uh, so we uh, like to call ourselves the GMAT experts, at least for the Indian student base. Our teaching is very, very Indian student oriented so that nobody is left behind. Students whose uh, native English is not English, they find our teaching uh, very uh, simple. I mean, we simplify the GMAT exam for them. So if you are not, uh, if you are not, uh, if you are a non-native English speaker, you would find our session, uh, find our teaching methodologies, you know, very, uh, very easy. So the GMAT would no longer be a daunting task for you. You will realize that it's about some strategies and applying the concepts. So can everybody hear me before I proceed? Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes, everybody can hear you. Right. So today I would I would give you some tips. I would start with some strategies, and then I would like to run it run this in workshop style. That means it will not just be me speaking. I would put up questions, and I would ask you guys to solve those questions. Then I would explain those to you. So I thought it's always um, best if you uh, if you learn you know through practice instead of just learning theoretically. All right. So I'm sure all of you know about the uh, GMAT exam. So the time distribution, so in the verbal section, there are 36 questions. Approximately 13 of them are RC, or like reading comprehension questions. So around 12 are sentence correction questions, and 11, about 11 are critical reasoning questions. So the time required to solve an RC question does not, uh, no, does not have to be the same as the time that you need to solve an SC question or a time required to solve a CR question is also not the same. So these three different types of questions, they require different uh, different times. So that's what I would like you to uh, like appreciate. So you have 65 minutes to solve these 36 questions. You have less than two minutes per question, which is very less time. And these this two minutes doesn't even include the time that you would need to read the passages. OK, so uh, these 13 RC passages that's that's uh, spread over uh, that's uh, yeah, that's spread over around four passages. Right. So approximately four to five passages, 13 questions are spread over four to five passages. And this two minutes per question does not include the time that you would need to read the passages. So in, in reality, you have actually far fewer uh, minutes to solve per question. All right. Okay, just. Okay. So when you're preparing, so you, the first step should be obviously to have your accuracy high. Uh, you should know all the concepts. You, sh you should learn all the concepts. The official guide is a great place to start. So get yourself familiarized, you know, familiarize yourself with the concepts that are there in the official guide. Uh, try to get your accuracy to a 70, 80 percent. So at the initial stages, don't worry about time. OK, you have to approach the whole process in a stepwise method. So first focus on accuracy, then go on to timing. So uh, about uh, about like three, four weeks when you are just three, four weeks away from your actual GMAT exam. So these should be your target time. Okay, For sentence correction, you should target an average of 30, 40 seconds per question. Right? So which would mean approximately seven minutes for all the sentence correction questions that you would get on the exam. For critical reasoning, you should target an average of two minutes, which would mean around 22 minutes for the CR questions of the GMAT exam. For RC, 
to read the passages give yourself around 2 to 2 and a half minutes so approximately 10 minutes you should budget just for reading the rc passages then to solve the rc questions and again an average of 2 minutes which would which would mean around 26 minutes so this is how this is what your target time should be if you are able to hit those you know if you are able to achieve those then then it will you will ensure that uh, you know you are your accuracy would also be high and uh, you will not miss out on any questions and you will be able to get a, a easily a 40 42 plus you know score on your verbal section right so these should be your target timelines when you are just 3 4 weeks away from your gmat exam in the initial stages i repeat initial stages don't worry about time anybody has any questions till now any questions no i don't see any questions so far all right great so let's proceed Now, in sentence correction, some time management tips. I'm not. I don't have enough time. You know, in this one hour, I don't have enough time to cover all the sentence correction rules per se. So I will just cover some of the generic tips that uh, that you can apply to all sentence correction questions. First of all, do not read the entire sentence first. Right. So in sentence correction, you have a sentence. Portion of it is underlined, and uh, your uh, then you've got five answer options. So if you start by reading the sentence, then uh, you may not, you know, that may not be the best utilization of your time. So do not read the entire sentence first. Scan the answer options. So this is what you should be doing first. Even before reading the sentence, you should be first scanning the answer options. Then eliminate. Instead of trying to find the correct answer, try to eliminate the wrong answers. to for an answer option to be wrong only one word it's enough even if there's one single wrong word that's enough for you to eliminate that answer option but for an answer option to be correct every word has to be correct therefore it is easier to eliminate wrong answer options than to find the correct one so focus on eliminating the wrong options if you are able to eliminate the four wrong options you are uh, by default left with the correct answer know the rules and indicators so what i mean by this is that uh, in the official guide if you go to the official guide you will know what rules are getting tested for the sentence correction section then what are the indicators for instance there are about 50 60 rules that are tested on the gmat exam just knowing the uh, knowing those rules is not enough you should know how to decide you know which rule to check out first so if you get a get a question a sentence correction question and if you don't know which rule to try out first then you will not be able to solve the question in 30 40 seconds so knowing the rules is not enough you should also know um, how to how to find out which rule to start out with okay so that's a very very critical component of your sentence correction preparation all right let's start with this question okay so um on the exam you you, you would uh, i mean uh, you should budget for 30 40 seconds but today let's start with 1 minute take a minute and uh, and solve this question right uh, donka uh, will it be possible for you to open the poll the poll is open okay great Thank awesome you. thanks okay guys so if you think a is the correct answer then mark A in the poll. If you think E is the correct answer, then mark E in the poll. Okay. Don't type the answer in the chat window. Just use the poll.
uh donka i think you know i think people uh, can cannot see the screen when the poll is enabled is that so i you can see now the sentence uh, you can see the um, question and the answer now right 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 all right guys you know let's let's drop the poll so type in your answers in the chat window itself Do we have any answers? I'm not seeing any answers. Oh, well, there... we have the majority of answers are C and we have only two Bs. Okay, all right. So, uh, so unfortunately, all of you are wrong. So let's let's see. Um, now, in this question, as I as I mentioned, uh, don't don't read the sentence first. So don't waste time reading this. Look at the answer options first. That, for, they, it, to. Okay, so initial portions. You don't even have to read all of them, right? So that, they, enforce, enforcing, enforce, enforce. So there is a, uh, you know, so you have got a few mix of errors. So now let's let's see. Let's Now when you read the answer sentence also, just start with the word before the underlying portion. So you have the word or here. So or and these are the words which indicate parallel construction. So A or B. Let's say so A or B. Now A and B have to be parallel. Okay. So uh, so definitely this is the B portion. So let's go and see what A is. Only then I can check for parallel parallelism, right? And for me to be able to do that, I will have to read the entire sentence. So I read, you know, under the don't any word that is starting with capital letter don't waste time reading it just say under the sdwa the again don't worry about reading the whole thing gmat does this they'll just give you some really difficult words to try and confuse you but you don't have to fall into that trap just read the initials any word starting with capital letters it's a name it's a name of a thing person place the and there is no there is not going to be any error with it. Okay, so just read the initials. So under the SW, SDWA, the EPA is required either. Okay, now we see either, either or. So which is a pair, right? Either or is a pair. Now either or, when you see either or, so there, so whatever comes after either will also have to come after or. So after either, if you have a noun, after or, immediately after or, you need a noun. After either, if you have a verb, then after or, you also need to have a verb. After either, if you have a preposition, after or, you also need to have a preposition. So let's see. Now, this is this is how you check for parallel construction. Either two. Two is what? Two is a preposition, right? To approve, preposition and verb. So after either, you have got preposition and verb. So after or you need a preposition, right? So is th that is not a preposition. For is a preposition, okay. I'm okay with this. But enforcing, it is not approving, right? It is, it is not the ing form of the verb. Therefore, this is not parallel. They is not a preposition, so it is out. It is also not a preposition. So E is your correct answer. Two is a preposition. And enforce is a verb. So this is how you get you get the correct answer. You did, we did you know that we didn't even read all of this. We didn't even need to read all of this. Once we spotted the pair either or, then I just checked for simple parallelism, you know, and I got the correct answer. Everybody clear? Did you guys understand this? Yes, and we started receiving correct answers through the <laughs> explanation. Okay, that's good. That's good. All right. I'm struggling with this pen tool, but all right, okay. Okay, let's do this. One more question.
right? Have we got some answers? Yes, we have few bees. Actually, a lot of bees. Okay. All right. <laughs> now, again, in this, uh, I see processing steel crab, processing steel crab. So three answers begin with, you know, processing steel cra uh, crab. And two answer, uh, answer options start with small mills, right? So processing steel, steel crab is an action, which is a verb, right? And these small mills, to, these two are nouns. So do we need a noun or a verb, right? Now, if you look at the main sentence, the, uh, you see in contrast to, which is comparison. When you see the word, uh, words, you know, let's say like, unlike, in comparison with, in contrast to. So these words indicate that two things are getting compared. There will be two, at least two things that are getting compared, right? So, and the rule that's tested on the GMAT is that you can compare only comparable things. So I can compare a uh, compare an apple with uh, with a mango or with a, with, a, with a food item, but I I will not be able to compare an apple with a human being or with a car. Let's say okay. So only comparable things can be compared, which is like really great. So sentences are usually structured like this: in contrast to like, unlike, etc. So the this is there will be the sentence will go on. Then there is going to be a comma and the con sentence will end, right? So the whatever is coming after like, unlike, after like, unlike, in contrast to, is getting compared with whatever is coming after the comma. So these two things you have to check whether they are comparable or not. You don't have to bother about what is, you know, what is this rest of the thing. To see whether the items are comparable or not, you just check the words immediately after in contrast to, go find the comma and compare it with like whatever is coming immediately after the comma. In this case, in contrast to large steel plants, large steel plants, okay? So you can, comp now where is the comma in the sentence? This is the comma, just right before the underlined portion. So after the comma, I need something that can be compared with large steel plants. So processing steel crap is an action. I cannot compare it with large steel plants. For this same reason, A, B, C are out. I can compare small mills with large steel plants. So D and E, I'm left with D and E. Now that I'm left with D and E, so uh, first what I have to do is that I have to find the difference between these two options. So instead of reading one by one, I will do something that is called verticals, uh, that is called horizontal scanning. So small mills, the same as small mills, by processing steel crap, by processing steel scrap, same thing, into a specialized blah, 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 into a specialized. So I, until here, the, both these options are fine. Products, products, fine. Have been able to, have been able to uh, put capital, put capital. So until here, the sentences are running the same, nothing. And this is where the difference is. Remain versus remained. Plus, I have my parallelism indicator and. Remember, whatever things and is joining, those things have to be parallel. In this case, and is joining, have been able to put capital and remain. Put capital is, you know, able to put capital will go with remain, not therefore, D is my correct answer. Everybody clear? Everybody clear? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we received a lot of correct answers during the explanation as well. All right, you know, so uh, see, it's not about getting one particular question correct because no matter how many questions you solve, uh, that uh, question is not going to be repeated on your G on your GMAT exam. So the focus uh, should be on getting getting the strategies right. Okay, so as you as you saw, we solved two sentence correction questions right now and. Um, and I think we were able to do that and do both of them, you know, uh, each of them under 30 seconds, purely because we did not have to read all of it. In this question also, this question appears to be long. All the answer options are also quite lengthy, but we actually didn't read any of these things, right? So we wrote, uh, we read probably just about five, 10, five to 10 percentage of the words on the screen. Am I right? Do you guys agree? 
Yes, we receive a lot of yes. Okay, great. So, so this is sentence correction. Which uh, when you know the rules and when you know the indicators, when you know how to apply the rules. Uh, so and that's what at Jamboree we focus on. We teach you parallel construction, yes, but we most importantly we also teach you how to apply it in the most efficient manner, so that you can solve your sentence correction questions in less than thirty seconds. Okay, so uh, this is this is how you can save time in your sentence correction questions, and uh, you will be easily able to hit the average of thirty seconds if you use this these methods, right? Now uh, let's go. Let's go on to uh, criti uh, critical reasoning. So critical reasoning: some tips that you know, read the question stem first. Don't read. Don't start by reading the uh, paragraph. Start, read the question stem first, so that you know what you are supposed to be doing. Are you supposed to be weakening or strengthening, or what you are supposed to do? You should know that first. And when you are reading the passage, reading the information, then you can you are already looking for something which makes the task easier, which makes your reading easier actually. All right. So next step is always write down what you are required to find. Uh, this is a very simple step, and actually you might even feel that uh, it's very childish. Only only school children write down things. But trust me. In critical reasoning, uh, critical reasoning is GMAT critical reasoning is actually quite easy, uh, but the answer options are tricky. So the answer options are there to confuse you, to distract you, to give you very tempting information that is actually not relevant uh, to finding the answer. So that is where the GMAT trap is. So if you write down exactly what you are required to find, then you will not get distracted by these temp tempting answer options. Right, and again, use the process of elimination. Don't do not try to find the correct answer. Try to eliminate. If if you are able to eliminate wrong uh, the four wrong answer options, whatever is left is your correct answer. Okay, uh, and now another point is that know the elimination rules. In in sentence correction, it's easy. It's based on grammar, right? Grammar rules are the elimination rules. But in critical reasoning, there are some very specific forms, very specific, uh, you know, uh, traps that GMAT gives you in answer options. So those are the elimination rules. So you should know these rules. So, all right. So let's start with this question. Uh, as I as as I mentioned, just read the question stem first. So this is the this is called the question stem, right? This is the paragraph, and this is the question stem. First, read the question stem. So you know that this is a weakening question. You have to weaken the argument. So when you are reading, also you have that mindset. You are in that frame of mind. So let's take two minutes and solve this question. Actually, your target should be around one and a half minutes, but uh, like. Today, let's try with a two-minute window and see.
All right. Well, we have A, a lot of A's and a lot of C's. I think they're the same number. A's and C's, okay. Not bad. <coughs> right, let's read. Okay, you know you are going to, you have to weaken it. So what are the facts? So in critical reasoning question, there are data. You know, you have got data, which we call facts. And they are undisputable. So you cannot uh, you cannot weaken the facts, right? So a physically active lifestyle has been shown to help increase longevity. So now you cannot weaken by saying that it does not increase longevity, right? So this is data, this is facts. So you cannot weaken by refuting this, okay? In the Vistar region of Bellaria, the average age at death is considerably higher than in any other part of that country so this is a second fact again you cannot go against this you cannot weaken by weakening facts right by negating facts that is a strict no-no that is if any answer option goes against the given facts you have to eliminate that answer option vistar is the only mountainous part of bellaria this is another fact you cannot say that vistar is not mountainous a mountainous terrain makes even basic activities, such basic activities as walking, relatively strenuous. It essentially imposes a physically active lifestyle on people. So this is also a fact, so lots of facts. Clearly, this circumstance explains the long lives of people in Vistar. So this is what you have to weaken. So you have to weaken. How do you weaken? You have to weaken by saying that any answer option that says that physically active lifestyle uh, or in, is not responsible for long lives of people in Vistar. Okay, so you write it down. That uh, just just some kind of short form, physically active lifestyle. So physical activity uh, is, is, is not equal to uh, like Vistar longevity, right? Any answer option that says this. This is what I mean by writing down what you need your answer option to do, right? So physical activity, not responsible, not equal to Vistar longevity, okay? So I, I, I think there's a question, but I will take the question once I'm done with this, uh, with this one, right? All right, so let's look at the answer option. Options, option A says in Bellaria, all right, the all, so the moment I see in Bellaria, all medical, blah, 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 I don't care. Why? Now, this is what I mean by learn to eliminate the, you know, what are the elimination rules. So the question is about Vistar region of Bellaria. Vistar is the only mountainous part of Bellaria. So if something is applicable to all of Bellaria, it does not explain why people in Vistar have long lives. If, if something is applicable to all of Bellaria, then all of uh, like Bellaria should have long lives, right? So this neither strengthens nor weakens. So I will just eliminate this. I do, I will not even bother to read it completely. Did you get it? This is very. This is how you. That this is how. This is what I mean. This is how you like improve your timing on critical reasoning, understanding that you know. Uh, this key uh, key traps that GMAT gives you. The question is about Vistar region of Bellaria, but one of the answer option is giving me something that is applicable to all of Bellaria. Option B says the Vistar, re uh, Vistar region is one of Bellaria's least populated regions. So just because population is you know less, let's say. So does this say that uh, physical activity? Does is this question related to physical activity? You know, any in any way, physical activity not responsible for long life in Australia. Does this option say this? This option does not say this. So this is out. Option C says many people who live in Vistar region have moved there in middle age or upon or upon retirement. So this tells me that physical activity is not responsible, but that these people, they uh, they were not there when they were young, you know, so they came once they had already reached a certain age level. Therefore, they bumped up the average, you know, age of the region. So C looks like an attractive option, but let me see whether, you know, I have something better in D or E. D says, 
the many opportunities for hiking, skiing, and other outdoor activities that Vistar's mountains offer make it a favorite destination for vacationing Belarians. Again, vacationing Belarians will have no impact on Vistar longevity, right? So I don't care what is happening to vacationing Belarians, right? This is out. Option E says, per capita spending on recreational activities is no higher. No higher means is equal. Is equal or, you know, or, or less. Is no, is same, you know, in Vistar than it is in other regions of Bilaria. So option E and A, they're doing the same thing. They're saying that uh, whatever is uh, there, they're giving me, a, giving me uh, an attribute that is, common to all of Bellaria, but I need something that is specific to Vistar, right? Therefore, my correct answer is C. So in this question, I just wanted to point out, you know, the reason why we eliminated A, E, and B. These are some very common traps. <clears throat> Sometimes, they, let's say the question would be, for example, uh, you would have a question about teenage boys, okay? And then you will have answers about all teenagers. Or answer options that will talk about all teenagers. So that's that's going to be wrong because that is a wrong target group then. Okay. All right, any questions? No, there are no questions so far. There was one question. Unless the question unless the question that you've received for yeah, yeah. So, so yes, uh, sort of. This is an official guide, uh, official guide uh, question from the uh, from the diagnostic test of official guide. Yes. So it's good that you have been able to identify the question. Okay, let's try to solve another another CR question. So do we have any answers? Yes. Uh, well, actually, we have a lot of different answers, but the majority of answers are D. We have 1E, one 1A, one and 1B as well. OK. All right. So again, this is the question stem. 
which of the following if true would be least appropriate to use as support for the conclusion drawn by the anthropologist so let's read the question from bone enlargements that are commonly found on the ulna bones of the forearms of ice age human skeletons anthropologists have drawn the conclusion that ice age human so this is this is the uh, conclusion drawn the conclusion that ice age humans represented by those skeletons frequently hunted by throwing spears the bone enlargements that anthropologists believe resulted from the stress of habitual throwing okay so the uh, so so there there are actually two this belief is also kind of like a conclusion so there are two things uh, they have found some skeletons the bone enlargements they had bone enlargements on a particular bone right and uh, anthropologists believe that that was from uh, habitual throwing okay and and uh, why did this throwing happen so ba based on this they they kind of uh, guess that they were probably hunters they were mostly you know they were hunting by spears so there are couple of conclusions here right and the in this question you have to eliminate because it's least appropriate so you have to eliminate something that will support the conclusion so if any answer option says that uh, that um, uh, that these people i say these people so they were hunters any answer option that says they were uh, i say these people were hunters so you will have to eliminate them i said humans uh, are, were hunters so you eliminate them if you find any answer option that says uh, that uh, throwing uh, throwing of spears led to bone enlargement you eliminate them so anything that is supporting you have to eliminate so let's so instead of trying to find which which least supports we you we use a different kind of strategy we are going to eliminate anything that supports did you understand instead of trying to find something that least that supports least right we are going to eliminate any answer option that supports so that will make our task easier this is how you simplify the question for yourself okay humans typically favor one arm over the other when throwing and i say human skeletons have enlargements on the ulna bone of only one arm so this proves that they they were throwing right so and uh, throwing led to you no know, so this this agreed with one of the conclusions one of the conclusions of the anthropologists so i am going to eliminate this anything that supports uh on the anthropologist we have to eliminate then we will be left with you know whatever we are left with right? that is the correct answer then such enlargements on the ulna bone do not appear on skeletons from other human cultures of the same time period whose diets are believed to have been mainly vegetarian because they were vegetarian that means they were not hunting okay therefore there are no such enlargements so this is also supporting what the anthropologists are saying so this is also not going to be my correct answer option c says cave paintings dating from approximately the same time period and located not far from where the skeletons were found show hunters carrying and throwing spears all right so this supports that most of the people were hunters that they frequently hunted so it is also supporting the anthropologists so this is out i have to eliminate the answer options that support the anthropologists damaged bones in the skeletons show evidence of diseases that are believed to have afflicted most people living during the ice age so this does not tell me anything about um, about hunting about bone enlargement so uh, so i am not able to eliminate this so i will stick with this option e says 20th century athletes who use a throwing motion similar to that of a hunter throwing a spear often develop enlargements on the ulna bones similar to those detected on the ice age skeletons so this is also this is supporting this part that yes the enlargements happen because of habitual throwing so i will eliminate e so my correct answer by default becomes d so this question you know uh, easiest way to uh, is to solve this question is to simplify the requirement for yourself instead of finding out what would be the least appropriate you know uh, i mean would that would be the least appropriate to use as support 
instead eliminate the answer options that that would support did you get it everybody clear yes we have answers yes All right, great. so there is also a question before i go to the next part so there was a question for me who said um this is from saurav he said uh, i always get stuck in cr and rc when something is from biology when something is biology related what should i do so uh, my simple advice is that uh, stop worrying about the topic is maybe you don't like biology and therefore whenever you are reading it you already have a mental block you already go in with a certain fear so um, that is a that is the um, that is the worst thing that uh, anybody can do remember you know you do not have the luxury of liking or disliking a particular topic you have to solve whatever question is thrown at you right so let go of your likes and dislikes just because you like something does not mean like a topic let's say you like history just because you like history does not mean that you are going to get history related questions uh, more correct right or just because you don't like biology does not mean that you will get you know biology related questions wrong so let go of your likes and dislikes simply because you can't afford to have them you don't have the option of choosing your questions you will have to solve every question that pops up on your screen right did you get it i know it sounds like a like a philosophical answer uh, to an apparent problem but uh, actually it is as i said it's a lot of it the, the Uh, the accuracy rates related to topics are actually mainly psychological okay any more questions no we don't have more questions okay great okay hang on i'm all right now reading comprehension reading comprehension is one section where i mean i don't know about you guys but a lot of our students uh, most of the time uh most of the time they they like they, their accuracy rates in reading comprehension quite low uh purely because they find reading comprehension boring hence they don't spend too much time practicing okay so it's not that reading comprehension is tougher or reading comprehension accuracy you know cannot be 100% is not the case it's just that people find reading comprehension passages boring or time consuming and therefore they just avoid they spend a lot of time on sentence correction uh, they take a critical reasoning uh, not very seriously because they think that that's easy and reading comprehension because they find it boring they leave it till the end so don't don't be a part of such prejudices right you have to attempt every question with equal sincerity right now with reading comprehension uh it's a uh, read the passage carefully so reading an rc passage is different from reading an, an article online or reading some reading a book okay reading our reading a, a gmat passage is is about um, uh, anticipating what is going to be there next okay so taking clues from words taking clues from uh, from like getting taking clues about the tone of the author from the words that he is using etc etc so read the passage carefully learn to eliminate wrong options right that that is very important and uh, uh, ulti and ultimately it's if you if you eliminate if you know how to eliminate correctly you will get to the correct answer so this is a passage so we will not do all the questions associated with this passage but um, i just want you to first read the passage so uh, this is a short passage so you should take only about a minute and a half you no know, longer passages more time but this only about a minute and a half right Okay, so you read it first on your own. Once when you are done, just type in "done" in the chat window. Then I will walk you through the passage, showing what you should have taken note of.
Okay. Most of the people they say they they're ready. All right. Okay. Great. So while reading this passage, now as I said, it's it's uh, reading an RC passage is not similar to uh, reading no reading stuff that don't come on exam, right? So. Uh, so you should it, you should anticipate or you should have you should try to draw clues about what the author's tone is etc etc right? so in the study of whether offering etc uh, etc etc these guys have found the effect of so is mixed okay so this paragraph is I mean the author is talking about these two guys some study that they did about restaurants so uh, mixed means you know that there are going to be you know, two, at least two sets of opinions. So which you see, you know, for higher price. So this is one set of finding. The second set is for lower priced, right? Lower priced, etc., etc. Moreover, look out for some keywords as moreover. Moreover is adding information to whatever has come before. So since customer, so this is moreover, right? So this is not generally true in the case of not generally true means not usually true so that's it so this is the author's opinion so in the first part till here the author just listed this guy's study what they found and then he is this uh, he started giving his own opinion from here so this is the author's opinion now read it carefully for restaurant generally you know, uh, the main benefit of a service guarantee probably lies not so much in customer appeal, etc., etc. Stuff. So, uh, but anywhere by reading this paragraph, you can at least assess that the author is not not against these two guys. He's not saying that their uh, study is bogus, their study uh, findings are completely wrong. The author is come kind of you know respect quite respectful actually to these guys funding uh, findings. He's of course he's saying his in all whatever he has to say. Uh, so the tone of the author towards this these two guys you not know, and their findings is 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 quite positive. It's definitely not negative. Right. So that's how it is important to understand uh, the you know the tone of the author. It's very important because in some of the answer options you can actually eliminate based on that. Now, in reading comprehension passages, one type of uh, what we have seen, you will uh, in, for ninety percent of the passages, the 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 question that you would get, you would uh, get, you know, uh, is just hang on, let me, yeah, is the primary purpose question, right? So this is the primary purpose question for this paragraph. Just take take a, about a minute and a half and solve it. Just type in your answer in the chat window.
Okay, do we have answers? Yeah, the majority of answers are B. We have only one C and one E. Okay, great. That's good. So now I'm sure you've got the got the answer. No problem with that. So when you are now primary purpose, what you should know is that the the answer should be something that was discussed throughout the paragraph. So if the if the any answer option that discusses only an only an example, let's say, is not going to be a correct answer. And um, easiest way to solve or most time uh, effective uh, way to solve our is primary purpose question is to read the first you know first few words question the results okay so that's a negative word right question there's no questioning happening so this is you can throw out a immediately you don't even have to bother to read all of this uh, argue that only blah 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 so there's no argument happening there is no uh, nobody's trying to convince anybody you know to their school of thought so a and d because the overall tone of the passage is not like argumentative or or you know try there's no debate happening there is no cons conspiracy there is no controversy so a and d you can if just just by reading the first few words you can eliminate that discuss examine consider okay now examine is to like assess examine the conventional wisdom so uh, for rc questions also any even in, if any answer option even if a couple of words are wrong that's enough for you to eliminate the conventional wisdom so we don't know what the conventional wisdom is right so we i mean the uh, to the idea is not to do that so this is enough for me to eliminate these these words are not what the uh, you know this uh, this, this guy did a study and found the effects so it did not assess any conventional wisdom now i am left with b and e e says consider the impact that service quality guarantees can have on the service provided by uh, so the problem is here on the impact on the service provided, right? The, this one study was service quality, you know, uh, it, like guarantee of service quality will encourage customers. So these guys, and the entire paragraph was how whether the a service quality gar guarantee will lead to revenue generation or sales. The author mentioned a little bit about, you know, about service provided, right? But that is not the primary purpose. You know, by default, B is your best fit answer. It says discuss potential advantages and disadvantages. So yes, most of it is advantages, but we do have a certain disadvantage that was mentioned that, uh, that there's a neg negative impact. So yes, they did discuss all the possible positive and negative impacts of service quality guarantees, okay? So this is the this is the correct answer. What I wanted to show is that you they don't have to read all the option options thoroughly. You know, sometimes the first few words will give you the tone of the you no know, tone of the answer option. And if you compare it with the tone of the passage, you will be able to eliminate that. All right. Any questions? No, no more questions for this part. All right. So I had a couple of questions that. Uh, uh, there was one question about how many short and how many uh, large, so you mean long probably, uh, long RC comes. So there is no, uh, there is no fixed, nobody knows that. No. So um, you may get RCs that are as short as 25 lines, you know, or uh, like, and you can get uh, passages that are as long as, you know, uh, 60, 70 lines. So, and they, they split how many long, how many short, there is no fixed rule to that. So uh, there is one more question. We have read first statement and last statement for primary purpose. Okay, so you can do that. I mean, the first sentence, last sentence, you will give a, get a brief idea. But if you read, you will anyway be reading the entire paragraph, right? So you will be anyway better, you know, place to answer the question. But yes, very often reading, if you don't have the time, you know, if you want to go to, so reading the first sentence of the passage, of the first reading the first sentence of the first paragraph the uh, the last sentence of the last paragraph and the first sentence of the last paragraph would help any other questions no we have a request from a candidate to review again the first slide for the 
reading comprehension, but probably when you finish with all the questions related to the text. Right. So, uh, so, so uh, this was all my content. You know, I am uh, I'm done with the content. So, in case you guys want a uh, want a um, you know want a more elaborate uh, session or some uh, free trial or uh, some more videos that handle uh, to deal with some more concepts, etc. Please write to us at this email ID, online at jamboreeducation.com. If you want a free trial to an online product, you know, just write to uh, us at this. So we have lots of videos to explain a lot of the strategies. You know, I just, I discuss, I, I uh, barely scratch the surface of all the techniques and concepts because covering all three SCCR and RC in, you know, uh, in an R session is you know, definitely a stretch, right? So uh, please feel free to write to us at this email ID. If you need free trial, if you need a free trial of our online product, you know, please write to us on this email ID. <coughs> Any other questions, anybody? No, I don't see any other questions from candidates. So probably this is um, the end of our webinar. First, let me thank all of you and our wonderful presenter for the interesting presentation, help uh, regarding the GMAT. Um, just, just a second, we have um, one question that has just arrived. I will send it to you to answer it, and then we will close the webinar. So, uh, so I would recommend. So you said that you are a student of Jamboree and you are struggling with RC. I would recommend you. I think this is not the right forum to have this conversation. I would uh, recommend you to uh, meet your faculty in person, or um, if you are an online student, then again you can uh, you can uh, ask your online coordinator to uh, to uh, fix up your doubt session with your faculty. You can do that. We will be able to give you doubt sessions or give you one-on-one -on -one time to help out and to find out ex ex exactly where you are getting stuck. 